Hi guys, I'm Eileen. Today, I want to talk about how to have a successful low buyer and embrace luxury minimalism without too much resistance. 2020 was my low buyer where I didn't buy anything designer or luxury. And moving forward, I want every year to be my low buyer. And to be honest, I feel like there's only one secret to it, and that is to want to own less. A while ago, I was watching a YouTube video by Joshua Becker, and he said, desiring less is way more valuable than owning less, and I can't agree more. When you make the decision to have less and actually find joy in doing that, the low buy challenge will no longer be a challenge. It will actually become a habit. So now without further ado, let's see what are the five simple ways you can make yourself want to shop less and spend very mindfully. First and foremost, you really want to figure out your why. So why are you doing the low buy challenge? For some people, it might be saving up for a down payment for a house, paying off student loan, or simply to enjoy more space in their homes. When you focus on the big picture, the low buy challenge will become easier if not more exciting to do. For me, I want to be very intentional with everything I buy because I want to have more financial security, flexibility, and mobility. My aim is to keep my collection a very reasonable size, just so if I want to travel or move abroad in the future, I'm not tied down by my physical possessions. Currently, I don't have any plan to do any of that just yet, but just knowing that I have the option feels really satisfying. Besides, when I'm not spending everything I make on shopping, it frees up cash and that gives me options and leverage. And you know what? When I look at shopping from a different angle, it changes everything because I know I'm doing this for me. It might sound weird, but sometimes I even get satisfaction from not buying the things that I'm tempted to buy because I know I've used my resources for the things that matter more to me. And if I do buy things, I know I've only made the purchase after taking care of the more important priorities. In short, focus on the big picture. When you get enjoyment from a growing investment portfolio or your bank balance rather than a big luxury handbag collection, the low buy challenge will be a pleasure to do. Now, I would really love to know what is your why for doing the low buy challenge. So please share them down below and let's cheer each other on. The second tip to a successful low buyer is to be very honest with yourself about the hours you have to put in in order to buy something. This is something that completely changed my perspectives about shopping. I used to think I should reward myself with nice things because I work so hard. Then one day I came across a book and a message from the book really stuck with me and it went, why do we work so hard just to pay for our things? And that hit me quite hard because I was overworking myself so much. So why did I then spend my hard-earned money on the things that would only bring me temporary happiness? When you look at it, it's really a vicious cycle. We work hard, we feel stressed, we then go shopping and feel better for a short while. And because we've spent so much on shopping, we now need to go back to work and the whole cycle starts again. So one thing that really helps me is to see how many hours I need to put in in order to afford something. And you do need to be very honest with yourself when figuring out your real figure. So let's say if you're getting paid $50 an hour, that quite often is not the real figure because you do have to factor in things like taxes, clothes, travel, medical bills, and so on. When you factor in all these work-related expenses, you might realize the real figure is quite a bit lower than expected. For me, whenever I come across something I'm interested to buy, my mind would automatically work out the hours I need to work for to afford the item. So for example, I might have to work for three hours for a pair of shoes or 10 hours for a luxury handbag. Doing this mental calculation really helps to filter out everything that I don't need to buy. Now, I'm not suggesting that shopping is evil and that you should never shop again, but the key is to do it very intentionally. 
I still pay good money for good services and products if they enhance my well-being or improve my quality of life. This is why I have no problem promoting good products on this channel. If something brings you joy or value, it is worth paying for, but that is quite different from indulging in excessiveness on a regular basis. Tip number three to have a successful low buyer is to allow yourself to explore activities other than shopping and find something you truly enjoy doing. I've spoken about this before, but I feel like a lot of people do shop out of boredom. I used to do it myself and it was one expensive hobby. I think for many of us, shopping has almost become a second nature and something we do just for the instant gratification. So when you look deeper into it, we are spending a fortune just to feel good for a few days, if not a few hours. So looking for the cheaper options to spend your time is not only more sustainable, it can also feel a lot more fulfilling. If you're looking for ways to explore your creativity and find your passion, definitely try out Skillshare. And I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of inspiring classes. You can literally learn about anything on Skillshare, whether it is how to do yoga, bake a cake, make your own furniture, or be your own boss. For me, having this YouTube channel as my side project really helps to filter out a lot of the distractions and temptations, and I feel like I'm spending more time on creating rather than consuming. And one class I would really recommend on Skillshare is Discovering Success by Emma Gannon. In the class, she talks about how to find your inner passion and then turn it into a side hustle and even a thriving business. If you're not too sure about the direction of your career or your life in general, I think this class will benefit you a lot. For less than $10 a month, you will get unlimited access to thousands of ad-free classes. And the first thousand people to click on the link down below will get a free trial of premium membership. So make sure you take the opportunity to boost your personal growth. Tip number four to make yourself want to buy less is to cultivate the habit of saying no to absolutely everything that doesn't feel 100% right for you. Essentially, you want your default mode to be no rather than yes. A while ago, I read a book called uh, Goodbye Things by Fumio Sasaki and there's a line in the book that has become my favorite, which goes, if it's not a hell yes, it's a no. Quite simply, if there's any sign of hesitation about an item, you need to walk away from it and don't try to justify the purchase in any way. So for example, if you're not too sure about the color of a Chanel handbag, don't try to convince yourself that the handbag is in very high demand or is very hard to come by. Similarly, if you come across a handbag in a very delicate ladder, be honest with yourself that you might not fully enjoy the bag because of the anxiety of scratching it. For me, I also find it really helpful to think about the time I might have to spend on exchanging, returning, and even selling the item if it turns out I don't actually love it that much. And many times, I will decide it's actually not worth my effort. Another example where saying no is really important is when there's a price increase. Many luxury houses like Hermes, Chanel, and Louis Vuitton have price increases every single year, and that can really create a sense of urgency. In fact, I know a lot of people would rush to the store to buy the things they don't even like that much just to beat inflation. So one way to go around it is to let go of the fear of missing out. Instead of fixating on why you should buy the item, focus on why you shouldn't instead. When your default mode is no rather than yes, it straight away simplifies your shopping habits and it will also save you a ton of money. At first, it might seem hard to do, but when you start being more selective with everything you buy, you will start to value your time, money and space so much more. And I promise you, the low buy challenge will just become an afterthought. Tip number five to have a successful low buy year is to hold yourself accountable. If you're serious about doing a low buy challenge, don't be afraid to tell your friends, family, and colleagues. 
For me, having this platform really helps me to stay on track because when I share my insights about mindful spending, I attract very like-minded people and we encourage each other to do this together. Besides, I feel like it's a human nature in the sense that when we make our goals known, our desire to achieve them becomes stronger because we naturally don't like to disappoint anyone. It's not so much about external validation, but when people approve of what we do and cheer us on, we just want to do better. I also believe that when we put ourselves out there, the universe will send us the energy we need. For example, if I know my friend is on a diet, I will stand by her and not push her to have fast food with me. So before you build up the muscle of discipline, welcome all the support you can have just so you can get there faster. There you have it. Those are the ways to make yourself want to buy less and own less. For me, when I see the low buy challenge as a personal choice rather than a form of deprivation, it becomes so much easier to do. I just feel like I have so much more control over my money and my spending and it feels really good. Now, just like a lot of people watching this video, I love beautiful luxury handbags and designer shoes, but I also realized it's completely possible to look at beautiful things without the burning desire to own them. In fact, certain items actually look better when they are left on the shelf. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to share, like and subscribe. I will see you in my next one. Have a nice day.